and welcome to another edition of the Scenic View podcast. I'm Jonathan Owens, your communications director, here with Artis Watkins, our executive director, and our special guest. Are we still calling you a special guest? This is like your fourth episode. I don't episode. know why. Special. Am I? I mean, I am special. <laughs> this is like your fourth episode. So It is, but I've been here forever. So. Suzanne Beasley, our government relations director. Hi. With her fresh, yes. dewy skin. Hi. Whoa. She's gotten several skincare compliments this week. And wow. So, you know, Random. I'm not bitter or anything. Good Wait, for you, Suzanne. Is this one of those like unmentionable stories from the General Assembly that you're getting to? Oh, it's very oh. mentionable. Okay. <laughs> okay, cool. So what's been going on down at the old legislature this week? Has um, it been it was, pretty busy? Yeah, it's been lively. There have been a lot of advocacy groups, a lot of visitors in the building, pretty sparsely attended by the legislature as a whole. Okay. There are some committee meetings happening, but the budget's being, you know, written behind closed behind doors. closed doors. So, you know, we what's just, the word for state employees? What's the word for retirees? What's yeah. the word? What are we getting? Yeah. We want to know. Tell us now. We all want to know. We all want to know. I reached out to a couple of the big chairs yesterday, and the only answer that I actually received was no decisions have really been made yet. So. So the rumor everywhere, it's not a rumor even, it's just being reported everywhere, is that the chairs are being told. Not to spend anything, yeah. Not to spend any money. Yeah. But but there is extra money. Yeah. Which dovetails into our first topic, Mm -hmm. Office of State Budget and Management and the Legislative Fiscal Fiscal Research Research, put out a report, I guess, was it Friday or Mm -hmm. Thursday? First? End of last week. Yeah. Saying kind of revising their projection for the surplus this year from 1.4, I mean, not for this year, for the next two years, which is a point we need to get to, or from 1.4 billion to 987 million dollars. Important, as we just mentioned, to remember that that's for two years. The first year, it's 188 million dollars that's available as the surplus, and the second year is 799 million dollars, and that's projected. It's not like right. a big pile of money sitting somewhere. It's a projection. <laughs> So what does that mean for us down there? Well, there's $188 million to spend, and I would think the the top priority should be on the people who keep this state running, spend the money on the employees that we have. Um, there's 3% already baked into the budget for their pay raises. So, Well, I got a lot of questions from members last week, and, and the press called us asking, how in the world were they off by half a billion dollars when they guessed at what the over realization of income was and our answer there we have no idea but it doesn't matter at the end of the day it doesn't matter whatever is available if you're running it like a business that's efficient the very first thing you're going to do is take care of your people right take care of the people who are providing the service because that's all government is in the business of is being a service yeah, and I think in defense of, of those two parties, I mean, it's it's not like it's a big pile of money and there's $500 million li- missing. It's a, a proje- right. projection, it a projection, right? projection, yeah. So. Yeah, and it doesn't really matter. I mean, yeah. At the end of the day, what matters is, okay, what do we have to deal with? What do we have to work with? And what's striking to me, last year, a huge chunk of what was over-realized was because staff uh, positions were vacant. Yeah, that's And we found that out. Right. So a lot of the money that gets stockpiled comes from not Mm -hmm. having these employees. And that's that's still an issue. The vacancy crisis is still an issue. And, you know, there was a little bit of spin a few months ago about, you know, the vacancy crisis hasn't hasn't gotten any worse. That's true, but it hasn't gotten any better either. Oh, I mean, my God, when it's at all time terrible levels and it stays there for well over a year to say we're not doing worse is is not something to cheer about. And it there, means we're know, still in the toilet. In there, terms. there are, you know, there are things that that you can do to appreciate, you know, employees while they're on the job. But the, the one thing that's going to make them feel appreciated and respected and that they're worthy of of that respect is money. Yeah. Pay the people. <laughs> we had an astute member who emailed me after we sent out the weekly scoop Friday, pointing out just that, what you mentioned, that a lot, maybe some of this money is from positions that aren't filled, you know. Well, it was the, it was for certain the case last year. I mean, it was reported that a huge chunk of it was from not having positions filled. Even if the agency still got money for positions, you've got to remember there's money not being paid in towards the health plan, towards retirement. retirement. You know, it's, it changes the amount of liability for the General Assembly to have fewer employees. Now, what else does it change? 
what the taxpayers get. Right. And you talked about in your your interview with CBS 17 that uh, it's about priorities, right? At the end all of the, the day, budgets that's are all about. It is. Yeah. You have to decide what matters. And again, I don't really have a problem with people looking at running government like a business. But if you're doing that, the first thing you're going to make sure of is that you have enough staff and enough decent staff to do whatever your business is. If your business is making widgets, you want people who can make the widgets. In this case, again, your business is providing service and you definitely can't do it with a bunch of empty chairs and empty seats in trucks that should be working DOT maintenance yards. And stuff. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is... North Carolina is a state where people want to come and live and raise their families and and do business. And, you know, how can we continue to be that kind of state if public services? Oh, it's going to continue until something super Um, terrible happens. This is literally no different than the message we gave alongside Republican council state members and their staff last year at a press conference. This will continue until somebody dies or multiple people get hurt. I mean, it's awful to have to say out loud, but let's say it out loud. If we continue with not paying enough money to fill these positions, then we're eventually going to get the tragedy that comes from that. We've okay. experienced that in you know, 2017 to, to yeah. get some things moving. Unfortunately, it was at the cost of correctional employees. And Ned Barnett talked to us last week from the News and Observer for kind of an editorial that he was wearing, an opinion piece. It was about remarks from the DOT secretary that there had been nine or ten suicide attempts in among DOT employees. I think if you read Ned's story, it came out that maybe that wasn't directly related to the stress caused by vacancy crisis, but it does put a huge strain on employees. I think that sure. was... Mm-hmm. And I mean, I think people who work for the state take... And and all public servants really take what they do very seriously and feel a keen responsibility to the public. And so you can only imagine if you're sitting there with a firsthand seat to just how bad things are in terms of we don't have enough people to take care of business and to take care of people. That's got to be hard. I can't imagine. The stress level over the top. And something else that... I don't know if folks are thinking about it. They should be. The, the number of retirements. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's an avalanche. It's going to continue, they say, in the next five years, 25% yes. of the understaffed amount we have right now. 25% of them will walk out in the next mm-hmm. five years because no one stays now. When people get to That's 30 right. years in state government, They're they gone. walk out the door. People don't even stay 30 years now. No, they and, don't. and that's <laughs> institutional knowledge just right out the door. What are we going to do? I don't know. And that happens, I mean, younger people in general are not staying that long, you know. Yeah, the job right. balance. It's not a not an easy fix for us. So there were some other topics we talked about of, at the legislature. What else is going on down there? So Senator Vicki Sawyer um, wants transparency from DOT. She wants to she wants to look at their finances. She wants to know that money is being spent where they said it was being spent. Yeah, I heard her podcast where she talked about she was kind of happy that the I can't remember if he's a CFO or his, whatever his position with DOT came in and said, "Look, you know, we could maybe give you the numbers in a better way to to make it make more sense and be a little more transparent. It, what has stuck with me though, I, I totally support any efforts for more transparency. In budgeting. Goodness knows we've pushed for that for years. So I support Senator Sawyer's efforts. But one thing that sticks with me is, especially where DOT is concerned, for years, decades, we watched DOT get whittled down to the bone in terms of how many employees we have because they were contracting more and more, privatizing more and more and more of DOT. So we were having employees tell us, hey, I can tell you about scenarios that are terrible where we're just wasting gobs of money, you know, leasing Cadillac Escalades for some of these contractors that we're working with, things like that, and the state's paying for it. So we asked legislative committees to look into this and bring people in and have them answer questions. Never could get No, couldn't couldn't make it happen. So I think it's it's great to look at the agency and the budget overall, but hey, I would encourage them, you need to look at these contracts, see what you're paying for, and then make that available to the public. Well, maybe Senator Sawyer is the one to shake that loose. We shall okay, see. Okay, go Senator Sawyer. Oh, yeah, go. So what I heard from that conversation was, you said you were listening to a different podcast. Are Sorry. you cheating on us? I, well, I'm not going to listen to our podcast. That would be <laughs> That's weird. That's all you can listen to. <laughs> 
Yeah, it was a big week for podcasts, it seems like, because uh, Brian Lewis and Scott David broke the information about the budget hmm. surplus on their podcast. We need I to break some news. See why a fangirl over their podcast? See? Yeah. Yeah. I like them. They have the scoop. I like them so much. Hey, we could do like a joint podcast where it's like the Jeffersons meet the, <laughs> or like the Jetsons meet the Flintstones. Right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the Jetsons. Which, which one are we? <laughs> yeah. Or, yeah. No, but that, so, so uh, podcasts are gaining steam in the uh, state they politics. Are, right? And that one's a go-to. So the Retirement System Board of Trustees met. We didn't get to touch on that much last week because we did talk about Medicare Advantage programs. And we did get a, a lot of interest from that part of our scoop this week. Uh, so oh, yeah. members are interested in what's going on with that. Anything out of the retirement system that we need to discuss? Um, so 1% of a true COLA. I'm not sure folks get this. 1% of a true recurring COLA cost $561 million. That means that a 2% COLA would cost more than a billion dollars. 1% of bonus money, which is non-recurring money, only cost $56 million compared to the $561 million. So you can see the dilemma there when, you know, when we hit the General Assembly yeah. with the ask of So as of usual, the retirees. retirees can expect to be disappointed in terms of a real COLA. Truly. And, I mean, well, I just, every time I get the opportunity, uh, I try to say this, the retirement system is built to produce its own COLA mm -hmm. and it is not making the gains and re the returns in investments. Well, I guess not because it was abused for decades, literally abused. The state didn't put anything at all in it one year at the, I mean, the turn of this century. But and then I remember less than a quarter of a percent one year, we had to sue a sitting governor over escrowing retirement funds. Scenic did. It was bad. I mean, people took advantage of this system for so long. And it, you do see the effects of that. And we're living through that now. So that's one of the reasons, if you're a Scenic member, it's one of the reasons you belong to something like Scenic, because we're going to fight for people not to take advantage of your system just because it's the 16th largest pool of public money in the world and looks awfully inviting to people who want to do that kind of thing. But at the same time, you can't just pull $561 no, the million dollars out, of yeah. that, out of that pool of money even because you could only do yeah, that. would sink the ship. Yeah. Well, it's not there. Yeah, the General Assembly can't fix that issue that for decades. Now, what the General Assembly, if they're listening, can do is whenever we're looking for reforms around the retirement system and transparency and, you know, being able to get public, it's not a public record right now. If I'm an investment manager and I've got 500 million, maybe a billion dollars of the state's money and I'm investing it on behalf of the retirees, I don't have to let you see any of that. I'm exempt from the public records. Act. Yeah. Trade secret stuff. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. So that's the kind of thing where they could help and say that is not a trade secret exception to the Public Records Act. So I always try to to say this when I get the opportunity about the retirement system. It is built to produce its own COLA from returns on investments. And there has not been an amount substantial enough to pay for a COLA in a very long time. True. End of story. When can you, we expect all this budget madness to end? So sure. there's a whole lot of chatter that around Memorial Day, 1st of June. Wow. That yeah. would be like two weeks I from didn't now. get that from anybody official, but, you know, Representative Donna White said, if you want to know anything, ask the lobbyists. There well, were a whole lot of lobbyists to talk to yesterday. So well, let's think about this. If if what we're hearing is true, that the people, the big budget chairs mm -hmm. are being told not to spend anything. There's nothing to I talk mean, there's, about. There's nothing yeah. to talk about, is there? No. Nope. Yeah. Our understanding is conference report's going to come out, vote it up, vote it down. So is the big sticking point right now the voucher program, you think? I mean... They got to well, pay for that, right? That's certainly a big point, isn't it? Yeah. So, what other huge <laughs> asks are there out there except the state employee well, raises? The state health plan still is owed hundreds of millions of dollars from the money the state got for COVID and that never got put back. So, I mean, that's a big mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. Sustainability. Yeah. Well, the uh, the budget talks will be heating up in the. Next few weeks, then, it seems like. And if you want to get involved as a Scenic member, we've set up an action on our Scenic website, scanc.org slash engage. You can go there and you can automatically send a, an email to your state representative or senator with one click. You just type in your address and everything, and it's very easy to do. Did you really say automatically? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And I we like. encourage you to do that. It makes a difference when they hear from you. 
I like automatically. I like automatically. Automatically too. <laughs> it does make a difference, to right? Though. No, it's it's really really a pretty cool tool that a lot of places are using now that we were pretty early on in adopting that. So I'm proud of that. But you can just send an email to your your representative, tell them, hey, this is why I need a raise, or this is what I do for the state. Uh, it's very easy to do, and also they can contact us here at the office if they want That's us right. they want to get involved. Right? That's right. Love to have you. Love to. Love to have you make some noise with us. For what it's worth, though, about the raise, and if we're hearing some things out in the field about people really, really looking for a retention bonus. True, but that so, that bonus has got to be in yeah, an amount that they'll yeah. feel it. I'm not sure that a lot of people understand in the, at the legislature that a bonus is taxed like overtime. Mm-hmm. So they feel less of the money you give them. So $1,000 is not anywhere near $1,000. Mm-hmm. So just, you know. Mm-hmm. But if that's something, I mean, as you're telling us, yeah. that's on your mind. If that's on your mind, tell the legislature yeah. that. Tell them what's on your mind. Tell them what would make you feel appreciated. Be very specific. Everyone likes a bonus. Okay, so it's time for insert jingle here. John's wacky weird question of the week. Sam. Why did you always say insert jingle here? <laughs> I like think it's this, funny. Is this is written communication. Okay. <laughs> And don't read the cue cards. <laughs> uh, so I came up with a, a question for you guys this week or gals. When was the last time you went to the movies, the actual movie theater? And what movie did you see? So the last time I went to the movie was in December and it was Beyonce's concert movie. It was oh, that's awesome. Cool. It was so good. See, I didn't I didn't know she had a concert. I would have I would have gone to that. Yeah, it was really good. <laughs> did go to the Taylor Swift concert movie. Uh, Saw that too. Saw that too. Okay. How do they compare? Uh, Well, they're so different. Yeah. They were both fantastic. I mean, Taylor Swift's a dynamic young woman and Beyonce, just Beyonce. I mean, let's, let's get real. (laughs) Yeah. What about you? About two months ago, I mean, my kids were grown, but my kids, we got together. So it was a reason for us all to get together and we had lunch and then went and saw the Ghostbusters, the newest, whatever oh, okay. it's called, the newest version cool. of Ghostbusters. I thought it was cool because I didn't know what to expect going in, but it's it was nice to see nice. all of those original folks from Ghostbusters. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> who are you going to call? Hobbling about now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, a few months ago, I guess Clara and I went to see Wonka, which was pretty amazing. Like I had very low expectations and it was very well done. Good. The new Wonka, which is like... You know, it's kind of like a prequel to the the whole Chocolate Factory story. But I bring this up because it just seems to me like we watch most of our movies at home now. Yeah, I think do we people do. go to theaters well, anymore? First of all, it it's like buying a small car to go to the movies. True, it is so <laughs> it expensive. Is. It's, really expensive. it's so expensive, and then it's so cold. <laughs> I just think it's really cold. Yeah, at our theater in Sanford, we can get like the kids' meal, which gives you. A small drink and a popcorn for a reasonable rate. <laughs> well, we get two of those. But. So the, the place we usually go has, um, you know, the bottomless bucket of popcorn, but they also have awesome cheese fries and you can get a cold beer if you want it. What was that place you mentioned? Alamo. Alamo Draft, Draft House. House. Yeah. Again, not sponsored. That sounds pretty cool. But a cool place. Sounds it like a field cool. trip for us. I'm what, surprised. Like, I, so Sanford has a movie theater. <laughs> <laughs> well, it did close down for a long time, but I think it's back up and running. So a field trip to, we're going to have our first live episode at the Alamo Draft House. There. This is, we're way off. We're all over the place. But I got to well, say, a friend of mine in law school was from Broadway. And when we said, well, oh. where's that? He said, it's a suburb of Sanford. <laughs> <laughs> and especially way back then, that was a funny, I mean, everybody gave oh, like, everybody. oh, okay, it's a suburb of Sanford. Broad, Broadway is a cool little place. It you is a neat place. Take, you've been there. Lots of times. One time there were these Broadway, like a Broadway traveling show, and they came to Broadway and did like a oh, singing cool. thing there. That was pretty cool. They also have a huge veterans memorial there. So Yeah, we went through there a lot on the motorcycles. So. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to Broadway. I was going to say, we're trying to, you know, <laughs> we eventually hit all the North Carolina places. If you've got a North Carolina place you want us to mention, yeah. let us know. Maybe that's what we should do. Yeah. Well, that wraps us up this week. Um, hopefully you found something interesting to to take with you from this episode, and we'll see you next week. Bye.